Welcome students, this is Dr. Carafano, the Chief Science Officer of SpaceGate Station, contacting you from the research vessel Discovery One. In this episode, you will get a chance to work with the scientists stationed at the Lunar Research Center. Our subject today covers the impact gravity and atmospheric drag has on a space capsule when it returns to Earth. In this lesson, you will apply the scientific method as you investigate, design, and build a space capsule reentry system using simple materials. I am now transferring you over to SpaceGate Station to begin your adventure. Good luck! Specialist Barber, I have another call from Dr. Carafano aboard the research vessel Discovery One. Thank you, Rora. I'll take it here at my comm station. Hello again, Dr. Carafano. Yes, I have made all the arrangements for today's instructional recording. Yes, I have checked the comm station relays with the lunar colony. Yes, I have notified NASA of the schedule changes in the instructional recording. Yes, sir, I have contacted Professor Miller at the Lunar Research Center and updated her on the schedule. Dr. Carafano, you have nothing to worry about. We have this covered. Yes, sir, I will let you know immediately if we have any problems. This is Space Gate Station signing off. Wow, he asks more questions than my father does when he calls. Thank goodness he didn't ask if I was eating right, which is good because I just ate his share of the uh, last of the Oreos. I mean, uh, Carafano, again, this must be the fifth time he's called today. He certainly is a worry, Wart. Wart, a skin growth that are caused by the human papilloma virus. There are more than 60 kinds of HPV some of which tend to cause warts on the skin. HPV stimulates quick growth of cells on the skin's outer layer. Engineer Walker, I am confused. How can an abnormal growth of skin cells display human emotions? Uh, Aurora, that, that was just another one of my idioms. A worry ward is a person that uh, worries habitually, almost needlessly, all of the time. And That's Carafano. And you can take that to the bank. Uh, uh, let's, let's not start that. Thank you, Engineer Walker, for the clarification. It does seem that Dr. Carafano is extremely concerned regarding Professor Miller's instruction today from the lunar surface. Yes, ever since Discovery 1 was delayed in their trip to the asteroid belt, he has been very worried about our instructional recording schedule. It was really nice of Professor Miller at the Lunar Research Center to volunteer to do today's instructional recording. I do not understand his level of concern. After all, Professor Miller was the project leader for the development of the artificial intelligence system here at SpaceGate Station. Her speech patterns were used to develop the template for my speech system. You know, Aurora, you could say that she's almost like your mother. Mother, a woman in authority, specifically the superior of a religious community, an old or elderly woman. Uh, no, Aurora. I meant that in context with the fact that she helped bring you to life, to give you birth, so to speak. I am confused. As an in artificial intelligence, I do not contain any biological material in the makeup of my systems. Therefore, how can I share any biological similarities or traits with a human if no such material exists? Aurora, what he meant was that she was a significant part of your creation and development. Therefore, such an analogy could be made with a human mother and a child that she has the same relationship with. That is an interesting correlation I had not considered. Processing. Processing. Does that mean I am therefore required to contact her on Mother's Day to demonstrate my appreciation for her involvement in my creation? Aurora, uh, no, that, that won't be necessary. I have also neglected to contact her on Hanukkah and her birthday. As a result, I have violated Section 24, Part 3.4 of the Nassau Communication Guidelines for Station Personnel, which includes the recommendation to initiate family member contact at least once per week. 
Does this make me an inconsiderate offspring? Look what you started. Hey, look, this is not my fault. Please wait. Please wait. We now have a secure link to the Lunar Base Research Center for today's recording for our students. Specialist Barber, I have transferred voice and video communication control over to your panel. Thank you, Aurora. Please inform my mother that I apologize for not contacting her sooner. I will have the appropriate floral arrangements and cards sent to her location as soon as possible. Please advise me if she finds this acceptable compensation for my poor behavior as her offspring. Wow, this is going to be a very long day, and I can't wait to explain to Professor Miller what's going on with this. Uh, Lunar Research Center, this is Spacegate Station. You are go for audio and video, video uplink. I will monitor the recording from here. Thank you, Spacegate Station. We are also go for transmission. Welcome students to the Lunar Research Laboratory. I am Professor Miller, the Chief Research Scientist here at the Center, and I'm looking forward to working with all of you today. Now today we're going to work together to use science to manage a problem related to spaceflight. And that problem is how does an astronaut's space capsule return to Earth after flight? Now the reentry capsule is the portion of the space capsule that enters the Earth's atmosphere after spaceflight. It contains the instrument panel, it contains the storage space, and if it's manned, it contains all the seats for every crew member. Now working with us today is our laboratory's computer system. This computer system is not as sophisticated as Aurora, However, this computer system is going to be extremely helpful with us with our lesson today. Sal, will you please introduce yourself to our students? Welcome, students. I am the Sal 9000 Series Research Computer System. My name is derived from the abbreviation SAL, which stands for Synthetic Algorithmic Computer. It is my responsibility to assist the scientists in the laboratory by providing a voice interface for their computer database system. Thank you, Sal. Now, where was I? Oh, right. There are many problems that can be encountered when designing a space capsule that re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. Sal, can you please tell our students what some of these problems are? Yes, Professor Miller. The two biggest forces that a re-entry capsule experiences are gravity and something called drag. Gravity is the force of attraction that a smaller object, like a space capsule, has towards a larger object, like the Earth. This attraction causes the smaller object to fall towards the bigger object. The more mass an object has, the stronger the gravitational attraction. Drag is the capsule's resistance to it moving through the air. Anything falling through air hits the molecules that make up air and therefore slows down. A capsule's entering Earth's atmosphere will be considerably slowed because Earth's atmosphere is so thick. When the capsule comes through the atmosphere, the air in the front of it heats up to a very high temperature. An example of this is a shooting star. A shooting star, which is usually tiny, creates so much heat coming through the atmosphere that the air around the meteorite glows white hot. So when a huge object like a capsule comes through, even more heat is created. Because of the drag on the capsule when it returns to Earth, a method must be created to slow the capsule down when it enters the atmosphere. Thank you, Sal. Our goal for today is to create a space capsule using some of the materials provided by your instructor. Those materials could be um, a small cup used to make the space capsule itself, some string or yarn, aluminum foil, cardboard, straws, coffee filter, and bubble wrap. Now your goal when creating your space capsule is to make sure that your space capsule slows down very quickly. Because if the space capsule is too fast, it's going to crash and be destroyed when it enters the Earth's atmosphere. Before I let you guys begin your process of creating your space capsule, we need to understand a little bit more about the scientific method. Sal, will you please explain to our students about the scientific method? Yes, Professor Miller. 
The first step is to identify the problem you are trying to solve. In this case, creating a method for slowing down a space capsule as it returns to Earth. The next step is to imagine the best way to solve the problem. This should include how you will use your material, how you will get your space capsule to land as slowly as possible, and what type of problems could come up during your instruction. The last step is to conduct research by creating your capsule and landing system. Record how long it takes for your capsule to land from a fixed height and then perform multiple trials. During the last step, you should improve your design if you can to achieve the best result. Thank you, Sal. That was very well done. Now, students, it's time for you to begin your investigation into building the best possible landing system for your space capsule. I wish you the best of luck and I'm asking your teachers to send pictures to the Lunar Research Laboratory so we can see how your space capsules turned out. SpaceGate Station, this is Professor Miller. I'm throwing it back to you. Thank you, Professor Miller. I'm sure the kids will have a great time performing that experiment. Oh, and uh, by the way, while I have you on the line, um, if you happen to receive some flowers and a card from the station with Aurora's name on it, um, please feel free to contact Engineer Walker for an explanation on that one. <laughs> yeah, uh, SpaceGate Station out. Aurora? You can end our recording for today. Yes, Specialist Barber. Did my mother leave a message for me? I hope she was not upset at the lack of my insufficient communication with her. Uh, not really. Perhaps we can talk about that later. I have noted that in the past, such a delay tactic in response to a query is usually indicative of news that is negative in its content. Uh, Aurora, that's ridiculous. <laughs> you know what? Now might be a really good time to do a communication system diagnostics for the entire space station. A communications diagnostic will take 6 hours and 34.9 minutes to complete. Uh, perfect! Uh, I mean, uh, that works. Please initiate. As you wish. Communications diagnostic initiated. Terminating instructional recording.